When I'm doing Bible study, I want to make sure that I stay within the biblical text as much as I possibly can. Now within Logos Bible Software, there are all kinds of really neat tools and features and searches that I can run that'll oftentimes take me out of the biblical text, but hopefully will bring me back in. But if I can stay within the text itself and actually have uh, interpretation of that text already in my head or already visible and readily available on the text itself, I really want to let the Bible speak for itself as opposed to going to other resources that are outside of it. So Logos actually has a really incredible feature called visual filters that allow us to mark up the text and put down really helpful interpretive pieces onto the text itself that allow us to just continually read and to make exegetical and interpretive decisions while actually staying within the text. So for today's example, let's go ahead and open a, an English Bible so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. So for today, we're actually going to open the English Standard Version, and to do that, I'm going to go up to the command bar and type ESV and then hit Enter, and this will open the English Standard Version. Now the particular verses that I, I want to look at today are within the Gospel of Luke, so I'm going to go ahead and turn my English Standard Version to Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Now, we're going to look at two verses in particular. These are going to be verses 31 and 32. Now, verses 31 and 32 read, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, one of the downsides about modern English Bibles, uh, and even Greek and Hebrew Bibles for that matter, when we're reading, is that so often there's a lot of nuance and things that we miss as we're reading through the text. Now, this is for a multitude of different reasons. Some of it has to do with uh, English reading comprehension, but really a lot of it has to do with uh, Greek and Hebrew language requirement, as well as uh, that we're disconnected from the culture of the day. Now, how can we actually gain these nuances and see them as we're reading the text? Well, one of those ways is to apply particular filters to, the, to our Bible that will allow us to see certain things or see certain nuances that we wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. Now, one of the things within modern English Bibles is that uh, one of the nuances that's been left out or one of the grammatical features that we're missing is the difference between the second person plural and second person singular pronouns. Now, in verses 31 and 32, the pronoun that in particular that we're looking at is the pronoun you. And in verse 32, we have the other pronoun your. So we don't know which one of these are singular and, or plural because most Bible translations don't distinguish those because in modern English, we don't distinguish those. We can actually easily and quickly mark the differences between these two uh, pronouns uh, by using something called a visual filter. In order to add a visual filter to our text, we're going to, going to go up to the Documents menu, and on the left-hand side, select Visual Filter. Now notice that there are three different types of searches that we can do, or three different types of visual filter searches that we can apply to our text. Basic, Bible, and Morph. And what this is telling us is that this is actually a search that we're going to be running. Now the nice thing about this particular search through a visual filter is that the search results will stay on our biblical text. Normally when we run a search in Logos, you can see the search results highlighted on any particular resource, but then as soon as you close the search itself, those markings go away. With a visual filter, we can allow those markings to stay on the text, as well as adjust the type of marking that's appearing. So for our particular purpose, we're going to be using a morph search because we're going to be searching for morphological data. And in our search range, we're going to set it to all morph text, in all passages, in all resources, but instead of Anderson Forbes Aramaic, since we're actually not going to be searching the Aramaic text, we're in the New Testament, so we're going to be doing a Greek search. And we're going to set this to Logos Greek Morphology because that's the morphology database that the ESV as well as other um, in, uh, reverse interlinears in English are going to be using. So in order to start a new morphological term, we're going to start by typing the at symbol. And that will give us a new drop-down where we can select a particular part of speech. So since we're going to be looking for pronouns, we're going to select pronoun. We're looking for second person. And then we want to distinguish between singular and plural. So let's go ahead and start with singular and then click the arrow. 
what we've just done is run a new search for every instance of the second person pronoun in the singular within any text that has Logos Greek morphology. Now this hasn't been tagged yet or we can't see it yet because we haven't applied it any formatting. So let's go ahead and click the formatting option and let's scroll down until we find a singular box. So we're going to select singular box to mark all of the singular second person pronouns. And you're going to notice if we look over at our English Standard Version, we now have all of the uh, second person singular pronouns marked with a single box. Now let's do the same thing for the plural pronoun. So once again, we're going to type the at symbol. We're going to select pronoun, second person, only this time we're going to do plural. And then select the arrow. And in the formatting box, we're going to scroll down and find the double box to mark now. Give it just a second, and you'll see the plural pronoun marked with a double box. So if we were to read verses 31 and 32 again, it's going to change the interpretation that we apply to these verses based upon the singular or plural use of the second person pronoun. Now, if we were to read this in our nice Texan voice, so if I was back in Dallas, this is how I'd read it. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have y'all that he might sift y'all like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Notice in verse 31, we have a plural pronoun, you. So this is not referring back to Simon himself by himself, but is actually referring to Simon as well as the other disciples. So this is saying, hey, Satan demanded to have all of you guys, all 12 of you, not just you, Simon, that he can sift you guys like wheat. But I have prayed for you, singular Simon, that your faith, Simon, may not fail. And when you, Simon, have turned again, strengthen your brothers. So the Lord is entrusting something to Simon here, that he can go back and strengthen his brothers, because all of them are demanded by Satan. Satan wants to uh, tempt all of them away from Jesus. But Simon is going to strengthen them later. So see how this has changed the nuance of this text, how it's changed the way that we interpret just by a simple visual filter that marks the singular and plural second person pronoun. Now we can do this. This has been done automatically for all of, all of our other Bibles that have Logos Greek morphology. So if I double click or if you double click within this gray space to the right of your English Bible, it's going to pull up your, another English Bible just to the, in a new tab. So this is going to be the next prioritized English Bible, and mine is the NIV. Notice that I also have this visual filter applied to these verses as well. And this is going to be the case for any English Bible or Greek Bible that uses Logos Greek morphology. Now that we've seen our visual filter marked up, let's do one last thing. Let's go ahead and name our visual filter. I want to name this second person pronoun. BF for visual filter. And now that visual filter will be saved, and if we ever want to come back to it again, we can open it up from our documents menu. Now one last piece, now that we've named our visual filter, is that if you decide that you don't want to see this visual filter on your text anymore, we can actually remove it or turn it back on. The way that we do that is we go up to the visual filters icon, which is this triple circle icon in the toolbar, Scroll down to the bottom where we have our visual filter section, and from here we can turn on and off the second person pronoun visual filter. So if I want to turn it back on, I just open up the visual filters menu, add a check mark, and that visual filter is added once again. So I hope that this screencast today has been helpful for you to show you how you can easily add filters to your biblical text that will mark nuances that are going on in the Greek grammar so that will help you to interpret the text more accurately and more faithfully. If you liked this video today, why don't you go ahead and go below and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'd also love to know your thoughts, so why don't you leave a comment and let me know, hey, how did this video help you? Are there other videos that I can make that are going to help you to do your Bible study even more effectively? I'd love to get your input.